Chapter 18. Square Yourself. The New Age movement was going strong around the Bay Area. A flyer in a Berkeley bookstore on Telegraph Avenue caught Brad's eye. He loved books, and his Saturday morning routine had him browsing them after his workout at Gold's Gym on Lake Merritt. He had a trainer now and had lost over 30 pounds. The muscles in his arms and chest were showing again, and the feeling of being sore all of the time from four workouts a week made him nostalgic for his gymnastics days. He would park his old Chrysler, walk up and down Telegraph Avenue, and hit three or four bookstores. As fascinating as the wide range of topics on the shelves were the people browsing them. Hippies, old folks with canes, professionals in tailored clothes even on Saturday, and beautiful girls. Once, he could have sworn he saw a famous actress behind dark glasses, Sandra Bullock, looking at a lovely face over a feminine figure and not feeling the pang of wondering if she could be his soulmate gave him relief and a new pleasure. It was as though he was admiring a work of art. It was a Saturday like any other until he took in the bulletin board at Moe's Books. There it was. UFO Congress presents The Face on Mars. The black and white photo of an Egyptian-looking face staring up from the surface of the red planet intrigued him. He took down the details of the event on a scrap of paper and the next weekend arrived at a small theater in Palo Alto where he found a small crowd milling around the front entrance. Right as the doors opened, a rotund little man with a goatee approached him from the side. Hey, don't I know you? You're my doctor from last year when I threw my back out. Thanks for getting me better, doc. Brad didn't want to explain that 90% of back attacks get better within six weeks, even without treatment. Uh, Brad Rosedale, he said, extending his hand. I know, I'm Larry Diamond, the man said, shaking the hand. His goatee made Brad imagine the chubby man was sporting goat horns and that his name was Larry Demon. He tried not to laugh. You sure look familiar. Nice to see you, Larry. Glad your back got better. That physical therapy you sent me to is okay. What brings a respected medical doctor to a UFO conference anyway? Don't tell on me, okay? They might take away my medical license, he countered in a pretend hush voice. Oh, your secret's safe with me, doc. Between you and me, the government is out to get me and I'm being observed. That's a story I'll tell you sometime. They filed in and watched a well-known astronomer named Richard Hoagland give a mind-boggling slideshow of satellite pictures of Mars showing features that he claimed were signs of a past civilization. Brad experienced the same kind of thrill as a kid in the 1960s looking at pictures of UFOs. After the conference, Larry invited him to a weekly discussion group in the city. You gotta come and meet my friend, Mark Vincent. He has a weekly gathering of people who believe their souls have come from other planets. We meditate and talk about far-out metaphysical things. Larry's boyish enthusiasm was inspiring, but unnecessary. When Brad heard souls from other planets, a power cord resonated in his brain, and he thought of the three blue heads from his teenage vision. Nothing could keep him from going to Vincent's teaching. He jotted down the time and address. Arriving at Vincent's place early, Brad encountered the usual street parking problem in Pacific Heights. So when he knocked on the door of the apartment in the quaint but very well-off neighborhood, he was naturally a few minutes late. The door was answered by a tall, blonde young woman. Hi, she said. And you are? A Brad Rosedale, Larry invited me. I'm Susan, she said with a smile. What's the secret password? Larry got up from a folding chair. Hey, Doc, come on in. Susan is our comedian. Next, she'll be telling you that she's from Venus. Susan giggled. There were about a dozen chairs, most of them occupied, and a sofa holding three more. This is Mark. Mark, this is the doctor who cured my backache. Welcome. Glad you could join us. Please have a seat. The teacher had an energetic glow about him and a quiet air of authority that, with his youthful appearance, made him most intriguing. Brad introduced himself, shaking hands with the mysterious Mark Vincent. He took a seat and looked around at the others. He could hardly wait to find out how Mark had figured out they were souls from other planets. Mark Vincent wasted no time. He introduced Brad and another first-timer, a cautious young woman with short black hair and thick glasses to the group, then started in on the lesson. Tonight, we will talk about the law of squares. This is lovely teaching from Ra that explains how the power of prayer, or shall we say the pure motivation to be of service to others, can naturally intensify personal growth as well as benefit beings in need. As part of our service in this group, we have been meditating together and sending love, light to humanity. You all know that is probably the most important service we can perform, and that it is very much needed as the earth goes through troubled times. 
The law of square suggests that the power of transmission is not just added, it is squared by the number of senders holding similar intent. Brad took in the teaching with rapt attention. Immediately, the decades-long mystery of his visitation in Grandma Mary's basement was solved. He had already figured out the first half from a study of sacred geometry. To become a square meant to perfect or at least improve oneself in the physical world, with the square representing physical perfection. The meaning of the second half, square yourself, was now revealed. He had been given instructions to find like-minded others to join them and to fulfill his desire to help people. And here he was, listening to Mark Vincent deliver the message from a group of higher dimensional souls called Ra, after the Egyptian name for their sun god. He realized with a powerful inner revelation that he was right where he was supposed to be. Mark sat on a chair in the lotus position and smiled serenely. Giving brief instructions for the newcomers, he guided a 20-minute meditation during which they visualized love and light for all beings, and especially for suffering humans on Earth. Brad felt a glow with vitality and a sense of deeper purpose. The Wanderers, the name the raw material used to describe souls from other planets, were here, at least a few of them, right in this room. After the meditation, Mark gave teaching and discussed the Law of Squares, which was followed by a tea service. When they all filed out of Mark's apartment, it was with shining eyes. They glowed with peace and energy from the meditation and their refreshed desire to help humanity. Brad hung back and approached Mark. So intent was he on receiving guidance, his mind flashed back to his third grade self asking Mrs. Finchbow for help with his grades. Mark, this has been amazing. Meeting you and hearing about the law of squares. You solved a riddle I've been stuck on for over 20 years. Brad told him about his vision and the words, to become square, square yourself. Mark beamed and Brad asked, how do I know if I'm a wanderer, that my soul is from another planet? Your vision was likely a visitation from your brothers on your home planet. They were greeting you and wishing you well, and perhaps even planting a seed that would help you on your path later. With such an experience and the fact that you were drawn to this teaching, I wouldn't be surprised if you are a wanderer. Most of us are from what is called the sixth density, and there are perhaps one million incarnated on Earth now. If you trust what you read in this book, the raw material. Many have yet to awaken to their true identity, but each serves others in their own way. Our group here is how I am serving. Mark looked directly at Brad as he spoke, his voice warm, his words effortless. He gave the impression of someone who knew what it was to suffer, but had turned his experience into wisdom that went far beyond his 35 years on earth. I can see you've had a lot to take in. I hope the raw material resonates with you and that you will come back next week. I'm grateful to meet you, Mark. I'll be back. It feels strange to say this, but my life suddenly has more meaning. Thank you for that. Brad felt as if a heavy weight had been lifted from his body. As he descended the stairs, he experienced the odd sensation of floating. Standing by a tree near the curb on Washington Street was Larry Diamond smoking a cigarette. What do you think? Asked Larry. Wasn't he brilliant? All those people from other planets. I love it. Finding out why I always felt like I didn't belong here. Wait until you read the raw book. Man, you're going to be transformed. He waved an arm towards the sky, smoke trailing from his hand. I'm from up there. Brad laughed. The sight of chubby Larry and his little goatee eyes wide, face flushed from the excitement generated by the group and believing he could be from up there, made such an odd scene that once Brad started laughing, it was hard to stop. The pleasure of solving the old riddle of finding that he too might be a wanderer. It was all so overwhelming and absurd, and the gut-wrenching belly laugh was exactly what he needed. Behoot, are you okay? Are, are you laughing at me? Asked Larry, a sudden edge to his voice. At myself, or at all of us, or at how absurd this whole planet feels right now. Brad laughed some more, but caught his breath. By the way, those things will kill you. Thinking about people giving themselves lung cancer grounded him back to the reality of being an Earth human, and a medical doctor as well. No problem. This happens to be my last one, said Larry, as he dropped it in the gutter to grind it out with his foot. Then he lifted his eyes skyward again. It was a cloudless Saturday afternoon with a slight breeze that made them both glad they were wearing sweaters. You could count the number of hot days in San Francisco this time of year on one hand. Brad felt as though a part of his brain that had never been active was suddenly firing with all neurons. It gave him a sense of being bigger than himself, 
as if his body was merely a fragment of his real identity. I have to go, buddy. I have a lot to think about. See you next week for sure. Brad walk glided to his Chrysler, parked blocks away on Steiner, passing the stately mansions and lavish multi-dwelling units of Pacific Heights, one of the world's wealthiest neighborhoods. Cradling the raw material addition in one arm, Brad felt the journey of his life take on a new direction. He had solved the mystery of squaring himself and couldn't wait to see what would come out of more of Mark's teachings. That night, he dreamt he was with the three beings with faces just like those in his vision when he was 14. They had thick human-like bodies and hands and feet, but they certainly weren't human. Behind them was a barren and alien landscape with unnatural colors. Another planet? In the dream, he looked down at himself and saw that his body was just like theirs, with a bluish hue, and when he moved, he felt lighter and faster than a human body. They were gathered around a complex object, willing pieces to move on it. He awoke from the dream and tried to make sense out of it. It seemed that the four of them were playing a three-dimensional game, using thought to control and move the pieces around. He couldn't think of any specific purpose for their actions. They were just having fun. Fun? Maybe I should try it sometime. The reality of his dream was so startling, he found himself bolting up out of bed, splashing cold water in his face. He paced the room for a while, trying to remind himself that he was a member of the species Homo sapiens on the planet Earth. In the coming days, a series of events happened, as though triggered by meeting Mark Vincent and his wanderers who were bringing light to the darkness of the planet and helping humanity. The first consisted of revelations prompted by his reading from the raw material for hours every night. Not only did the book describe human history and how advanced souls on other planets had been called to help humanity, it elegantly described the oneness of all beings and the creation of the universe. Their teachings on unity was called the love of one, and it resonated deeply for Brad. As Mark had advised, he started a meditation practice, and childhood memories of standing by the ocean or looking at the stars returned. He recalled how as a child, his mind would go quiet and he would lose the sense of a self separate from other beings. The combination of healing his psychological self and discovering the wanderers who were here to help humanity gave his life a new context. Everything was resonating. He had more dreams of another world, including one where he was responsible for maintaining some kind of transportation tube that stretched across a desert. I wish I was a mechanical engineer. I would build it. He couldn't know that in his extraterrestrial soul identity before this life, he had built it. And if it weren't for the elders on that planet who governed such projects, it might be under construction on Earth now. He had dream after dream, fearful, breathtaking dreams of jets crashing in populated areas as if they were demanding him to solve the transportation problem that plagued humanity. During his waking hours, it came to him that all is interconnected. His mission was being revealed, but he couldn't know how quickly a new journey could evolve and change, taking him to the other side of the world for even deeper discovery.